Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad and welcome to this special video in which I will do a mock interview session with a residency applicant. So generally I've done multiple videos on how to perform well on interviews, how you can answer residency interview questions, but in this session we'll actually do what we do in our company when we have a mock session with an applicant in which we divide one hour for half an hour of mock session and half an hour of feedback. So we'll do exactly the same and that can help you understand what are the good points that the applicant answered and what are the things that they can improve upon? So we'll get started. We want to take time to introduce Sanya, who is the volunteer for this session. We'll learn about this applicant during the interview. Welcome, Sanya, to this video. Hello, Dr. Asa. Thank you for inviting me here. And it's a great opportunity to be interviewing at this program. Awesome. Actually, let's start now as assuming the program. So this was the introduction for the video. And as soon now, the video turned on, and uh, I'm, I'm the program director talking to you. Hi, Sanya. Welcome to our program. Thank you for interviewing with us. Hello, Dr. Asad. Thank you so much for giving me a chance to interview at your program. And uh, I'm really excited to be a part of your program. And I hope that the qualities of myself that I'm put forth in today are uh, a good fit to your residency program, and I end up getting matched at your place you're more than welcome it's our pleasure let's start by having you tell me a little bit about yourself your background how, how you got here so first of all i am a recent graduate from india i grew up in mumbai itself and uh, i am not from a doctor's family per se so my parents are engineers i also have a younger brother so my interest or introduction to the field of medicine was not directly through my family it, it came after observing my, uh, the doctors that were taking care of my family or observing other relatives that were physicians. So in the beginning, I only just entered this profession because I found it very noble and I wanted to help people in need. So it was only after entering my medical school did I realize that I actually suit this field very well and the aspects that this field brings really match my personality. So once I started developing an interest in it, I uh, started taking part in volunteer and research activities. Uh, thankfully, I got to learn from great mentors. And that is how I began enjoying clinical rotations. And slowly, I started realizing that I really enjoy being in the operating room. So after my graduation, I tried to work on a couple of research projects that are related to my field. And uh, apart from that, uh, I think my personality would be described as a very cheerful and enthusiastic person who is always ready to learn new skills. Aside from my medical school, um, in my free time, I uh, like to enjoy a lot of hobbies. So I paint and uh, recently I've taken up a couple of new skills. I read books and I do yoga. So that is about myself and uh, very nice to meet you as well. Okay, awesome. So you mentioned that you start developing interest in going to the OR, you enjoy your time in the OR. Can you tell me a little bit more about why surgery? What aspect of surgery interests you? So first of all, uh, my interest in surgery started when I was a medical student. So when I started visiting ORs and the first time when I uh, assisted in a surgery, I felt that adrenaline rush. It was only later when I made a very informed decision uh, after knowing the pros and cons. But initially, what I like about the field was that uh, it gave a sense of creating a tangible impact with one's own hands. And most importantly, there was a patient experience that contributed to it. So uh, there was a patient of esophageal cancer that was admitted in our surgery wards. And he was very mute and lifeless before the operation. He had lost all hope in life because of his pain. After that surgery, when I went and uh, I uh, saw what he was like after the operation, he was suddenly happy and he used to smile and speak. It was His life was not prolonged by a lot of time, but he had a sense of relief. So that quality of the specialty of creating such a large impact on somebody's life in such a short amount of time really inspired me to consider this branch. I felt that um, all the other aspects of surgery that are uh, hard, for example, like, you know, 
uh, be investing a lot of years or investing long hours, this aspect of uh, the satisfaction that I would ultimately get from the field, it would certainly surpass whatever investment I had to put in. And secondly, uh, while I was in the operating room, I used to feel a meditative sensation. Um, just like when I used to paint, I used to lose track of time. I just enjoyed operating. And lastly, I would say that in the operating room, I was nobody's daughter. I was nobody's sister. I was not a junior. I was not a senior. I was just a part of a team whose singular goal was to take care of the patient and make sure that the patient goes home healthy and happy. So I think all of these aspects of surgery in combination make it a very enduring specialty and I would be willing to invest whatever I want to and whatever I have to just to be able to contribute to this field. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm sure you've applied to many programs and uh, you had the opportunity probably to interview on other programs. What makes our program unique? Why would you like to come here? What, the place that I train or my medical school is a tertiary care hospital that deals with a lot of volume and uh, it takes care of a lot of uh, complex cases and it has a great diversity. So in a residency program, I just want to carry it forward. And as your program is also one of the high volume centers, deals with a lot of trauma cases and has a lot of fellowship opportunities, I think that is the kind of program I want to pursue the rest of my education at. Secondly, I also see that you value diversity a lot and you have a lot of opportunities for residents to choose and explore before making a final decision for the choice of their fellowship or you know what they want to pursue in the future. And in general, I uh, also appreciate the quality of developing a camaraderie and a long lasting relationship. And from everything that I've read about you on your website, it really seems that your residents are well knit, their feedback is uh, taken seriously. And there are continual improvements in the quality of the program that are undertaken by your department. So I feel all in all, yours is a very uh, balanced program that would also, um, you know, take uh, take care of uh, teaching residents how to be a good team leader, but also provides the necessary surgical autonomy that is necessary for a good learning. And at the same time, would take care of residents' wellness as well. So I think all in all, it's a very good program to be at. Okay. Uh, I saw on your CV that you did an internship here in, in India. Did that internship uh, year include surgeries and what kind of skills did you get from this year? Yes, in fact, it did include surgical uh, rotations. In fact, I was able to function similar to a level of a first year resident uh, because I would take long shifts, I would take night shifts, I would even take 24 hour calls with the residents. So I think it was a very realistic uh, experience into uh, what the field of surgery is really going to present and what the life in surgery would be like. So thanks to our department being very friendly, we were given a lot of opportunities to present our skills and we would they would also actively involve us in patient care and they would give us a lot of hands-on opportunities as well. That's so I, I was able to assist in a lot of major and minor cases and uh, I think that has really shaped my interest in surgery even further. And I think uh, it just taught me how uh, to become confident in my own skills because I feel because that uh, since I have been uh, painting for such a long time, I was really good at my kinesthetic abilities and working in the department of surgery during my internship really reinforced that feelings because I was able to learn and grasp these surgical skills faster and that really made me stand out and gave me confidence in my own ability to excel at this field so you said you paint is that painting behind you you painted that yes so this uh, is the form uh, this painting is actually a still life painting so this uh, particular style of painting revolves around capturing objects as they are in reality and the science behind it is uh, really capturing the light and the shadows in a realistic sense so as to, uh, you know, 
display a three dimensional quality to a painting which is really a two dimensional structure so uh, i really enjoy that uh, aspect of the painting awesome awesome um I saw that you didn't have US clinical experience. So how can you make sure that this system is right for you? You're going to be spending years here if you want to bash into general categorical general surgery. We're talking about five years. How do you know that this system is the right system for you? And would you consider not having a US clinical experience one of your weaknesses? Yes, while I do believe that US clinical experience is important, but I feel that the experiences in my life have helped me become a very adaptable and flexible individual. For example, I don't mind working in, uh, I don't mind working long shifts. I don't mind uh, taking long calls because I'm already used to that thanks to the training that I've received. And secondly, when it comes to adapting to a new place, I've had the opportunity of uh, going into rural postings and you know, being posted at places which were not exactly in my hometown. So I do have an experience of adapting to the culture and making friends uh, at a place which is totally foreign. So I think culturally, I would be fine. And I really enjoy the diversity in people. I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy learning new cultures and styles and learning about people in general. So I think that would be taken care of. Also, uh, I think I spend a lot of time in uh, self-improvement and all of these years that I spend one, one hour each every day on myself have helped me uh, become self-aware, self-reflective and uh, have made me flexible and adaptive to just, you know, take on challenges and being positive. And my uh, approach would be to learn from my mistakes well and make sure that I uh, implement the changes that I think I should the next time when a situation occurs. So I think these qualities in general will help me adapt to the US healthcare system better. And I do follow a lot of social media pages and I read up a lot. So I think I do have a fair sense of how the system works and I it would not take more than a month or so for me to adjust into the system. Okay. If your best friend has to describe you in three words that can convince me to take you as a person, as an applicant, what, what are these three words? So first thing I would say, uh, my friend would say I am a compassionate person because in general, I'm a people's Just person. Just three words. And... Three words. Oh, okay. So, so first word would be compassionate. Okay. Second word would be self-motivated. And third word would be loyal and committed. Okay. Um, now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about behavioral scenarios that you might encounter or encountered already in your journey. Uh, can you tell me about the situation in which you failed and how did you react to that failure? Uh, thank you. So it is a very interesting question. So I would say that um, a situation where I failed would be, I was uh, in my rural postings and uh, it was midnight at that time. And we had, uh, we did not have a lot of security. So I was the only intern doctor over there. And suddenly an angry patient came in. And uh, at night we were used to, there were two doors to the uh, OPD, outpatient department. So one door, we used to keep it shut. So the, pa the patient, since he was an angry patient, he knew how to corner the doctor. And unfortunately, I allowed myself to get cornered. Although I was able to uh, keep a composure and eventually get out of that situation, but I think I failed in the sense that I was not aware when uh, I experienced the situation in the first time. But I did learn a lot from that uh, incident. And I think now I know how to behave around a violent patient or what precautions to take beforehand so that such a situation does not occur. And... I think overall, I'd be able to take care of the situation better if uh, next time such a situation occurs. So immediately after the incident, I made sure that both the doors were unlocked just in case if something of this sort happens, the doctor can exit through the other one. And I made sure that uh, another security person was employed and um, at night, whenever a student or an intern or anyone for that fact, uh, if they are alone in the OPD, I made sure that that would not happen. And I made sure that 
the residents and the seniors were well informed of the situation so that they could take, take better steps next time. Tell me about the situation uh, which demonstrates your leadership skills. In, I think uh, the situation would be Uh, I think it was the time in uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that I would like to describe over here. So it was the early days of COVID-19 pandemic when uh, the lockdown had just begun and patients and international travelers were being quarantined and uh, isolated. That time, a new facility had opened up and all our doctors and residents were sent from our medical school to uh, assist the screening and isolation processes over there. Apart from our doctors, there were a lot of staff over there which were initially taking care of all of these things before the doctors arrived. So uh, at that time, I noticed that uh, even though the guidelines were laid properly, they were not being implemented. So for example, uh, certain countries were uh, considered high-risk zones and they were being strictly isolated uh, when they would you know, arrive in India. So I noticed that uh, certain small things were being neglected. Like, for example, these were like the first two or three days of the entire thing. So things were not streamlined at all. So, for example, uh, Dubai or UAE, one of them was considered a high risk country. And uh, only that was written in the official guideline. And the staff there did not know that Dubai is actually a part of United Arab Emirates itself. So... One of them they were considering as high risk and the other they were not. So I realized this and um, I made sure I communicated it back to my uh, department chair who was responsible for handling this. And I took up the charge of making information brochures and stream uh, and giving information to everyone uh, about what is to be included, what is not, just a general knowledge uh, session where you know uh, I would tell them how to check the visas, how to, uh, which country comes in which place and uh, all of that. So uh, I think my opinions were considered very well by the department chair and she was really receptive of everything I was doing. So I think that is a situation that I would like to share because uh, I think that was a significant contribution that would have helped uh, my city a lot during the first you know two to three days of the pandemic. Awesome. So now let's... Uh... Talk about the situation that you had a miscommunication with one of your residents or senior residents. How did what happened and how did you handle it? Uh, in fact, such a situation did arise. There was a lot of chaos in the emergency department that day, and uh, while the residents were uh, sending out orders for the interns to you know follow up. I was responsible for uh, conducting ECGs and drawing blood samples of several patients. So uh, the miscommunication happened in a way that my resident was not, uh, like I was not able to communicate the resident properly as to what samples had been collected and what samples had not been, what tests had been done and what had not. So uh, the situation, uh, escalated because uh, in, in some way and I think I, I was responsible for the miscommunication because uh, I did not uh, factor in the resident state of mind where, while I was making my communications and I think I could have done it in a better way by writing it in a I mean by presenting it in a written format so that the resident would you know be able to track the situation in his own time. I think that is a situation that I learned from very well. And next time, if a situation like this happens, I would definitely uh, make sure that I approach my resident when the resident is calm. And secondly, I would present my information that is in a way that is easy to retain and is easily accessible later. And uh, in general, also, I would uh, just uh, like to, you know, take a better make a better judgment of the situation uh, before communicating my opinions or uh, uh, whatever has happened in this situation. I think that is one uh, point. Tell me about the recent to... movie that you watched and you found it to be very interesting and why did you find it interesting? Actually, uh, 
recent the recent movie that i watched was beast uh, starring idris alba so uh, it had a lot of negative reviews when i went but i went with an open mind and i really found it interesting because the concept was a little of the uh, mainstream topics so it was about a lion who was injured because poachers were targeting his entire pride and he was the only one left so he the lion wanted to take revenge on all the good humans as well so that was about you know how humans and animals interact and how the entire ecosystem shifts when uh, we purposely create some uh, change in their natural uh, livelihood or their natural lifestyle so i think uh, while at the end the humans did survive but i think it was a good take on uh, how to achieve a balance and what to take care and what to not and how to deal with uh, species that are not humans okay um if you had to talk to a tree what would you tell the tree very interesting question i think first of all i would like to ask the tree whether uh, you know uh, it is how it feels about the whole situation about humans changing the uh, the the natural habitat and humans trying to you know uh, make settlements for themselves instead of you know uh, taking care to ensure a balance between both the situations and if i would like to ask the tree something i would definitely ask the tree for advice because uh, trees have been standing there for years and years and might have witnessed a lot of things and with this much experience i would definitely like to make it my mentor okay okay uh do you have any questions for me yes in fact i do have a couple of questions for you first of all i would like to understand uh what has your program done for the past 5 years to take residents feedback seriously and how do you incorporate those changes in to make your residents lives better so we have multiple meetings with the residents throughout the year generally at the first half and then the, at the end of each academic year we meet with all the residents we meet with the resident representatives which gives us anonymous feedback about the different rotations about different faculty the residents also receive actual uh, evaluations about the faculty about their core residents about the rotations and usually they can give us their feedback and we can hear their voice and based on that we've changed the structure of multiple rotations that we found the residents were not enjoying or not finding to be educational so change has been done on the uh, rotation level and also on the wellness level we did multiple activities to meet with the residents together uh, take them out sometimes uh, pizza sometimes a beer to increase the camaraderie among the residents that is great to know that makes me feel so much at ease thank you so much any other questions yes so secondly i would like to know how in your program how is the experience of female surgeons or female residents in your program and how do you think you have uh, managed to you know keep that gender equality in place yeah we have almost 50% males females in our program and this is the present of the national trend um uh, if you were asking me 10 years ago the answer would have been different but i feel over the last 10 years we've been making huge progress in that field so males and females are equal in our program and we select the best applicants regardless of their gender that is great to hear and lastly i would like to ask you uh, what do you feel about uh, I, i mean how have you increased diversity in your program and what are your uh, plans uh, to uh, make uh, you know increase diversity so that it is reflective of the patient population hence forth yeah so diversity has been uh, an extremely important uh, selection criteria when lo- looking at at residents we want a diverse group that can as you said can uh, resonate with the patient population that we see but also a diverse group that can bring different opinions opinions that are not same color that can bring improvement to the program so that has been imp- implemented in the way we select our residents 
in the way we select our faculty that can reflect also on role models for the residents. As you said, our patient population is diverse, so that brings diversity to the program and through uh, some lectures and activities we get from the American College of Surgeons. Great, nice to hear. So one last question. So uh, you told me about the strengths of your program and I have read them on your website as well. So I would like you, I would like to ask you, what do you consider uh, your, uh, the weakness of your program? So I would not say it's a weakness, but more of something we're trying to improve is uh, increase the sites that our residents work at. Currently, we have a level one trauma center and two other hospitals, but we're trying to include more hospitals so our residents can get a broader exposure to specifically community hospitals or private practices, because in our opinion, this is a, a, an important part of the training for future surgeons. It nice was, it was very that. nice meeting you, uh, Sanya. I wish you best luck on your uh, other uh, um, uh, interviews. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I had a great time today. And uh, I hope that uh, we keep meeting and I get a chance to work with you and that we would you know, build a good bond and uh, we would be able to work very nicely for the uh, next five years. Of course, good luck. Um, Thank you. Awesome. So now this is the exact way we do our advising sessions or interview sessions. We would have half of the session approximately going to, towards the question. And I've been writing so many notes about your answers. And then we go into the overall feedback. And then we go into the individual question feedback. And this is all we will be doing today. So I'll give you the general feedback first. Let's start with sure. the overall uh, tone and body language, uh, I felt that you were at some points not confident from your answers. You were hesitant to answer. I feel like the tone was a tone of an afraid person or a person who is who's kind of shaking from the inside and I don't want that to show up on the, on the interview. We're all stressed at some point, especially during the first few interviews, but I want to see the excitement. I want to see somebody who is really motivated and passionate about this and having a conversation interview at the end of the day is a conversation between you and the program director or the residents. So I don't want to feel that I'm interviewing an applicant who's afraid or shy or uh, not giving me uh, the vibe of someone who's going to be working very hard and be, you know, uh, working with the patients in a very compassionate way. That's the, the first thing. Uh, the, the way you're dressed, the way your body language is, is uh, being conveyed through the interview, in my opinion, it's good. I would try to focus the camera more towards down. So I would have your face have around third of the picture. Now it's like half of it is empty over your head. Yes. I would see like my dimensions now that is a little bit over my head. Right. I would even a little go a little bit higher and have right. maybe you're like up okay. here. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I think that would be better. A little bit also higher. You can adjust it later, but I'm just giving you the feedback now. Yes. The color Great. green. I'm not a fan of a green <laughs> background. Uh, okay i would go for more colors like light gray white uh, all right maybe have a book bookcase behind you in which you show stuff like this painting this painting is a great idea uh, uh, try to have it maybe hang on the wall uh, in which light doesn't right. reflect into it so make it in a way but also put other things that might reflect things about you but i would highly not recommend the green background but again these everything i'm talking about now is not black or white it's not 100 or zero percent somebody might love the green background might choose you for your yeah. green background others might not i'm giving my opinion which i think reflects the majority of what people think based on the feedback i heard from program directors yes. and applicants going towards more neutral colors and the way you dress and the way your background is uh, is safer in my opinion um Agreed. another thing is i didn't notice that too much but when you're looking, look at the camera, at me. I yes. Think what you're doing now is is uh, is good. When you're looking down, I feel that you're looking at me probably, but it doesn't feel that you're looking at me. So make okay. sure that you're always looking at the yes. camera. The light is coming towards your face. Um, general thing about your answers. They were extremely long, in my opinion. There were so All many right. questions I wanted to interrupt, and I wanted to interrupt, but I didn't. And the program director might not interrupt you, but you would have... 20 minutes or 10 minutes for an interview and you will lose the chance to answer certain questions 
that you would have answered otherwise. For example, they might mm. have asked you, I wanted to ask you about your research, but I didn't have the time to do that because mm. we, we, you're, you're taking so much time to answer each question, which is not leaving me with enough, uh, with enough time to go over uh, other questions. So just mm. be careful about that. And we'll go that into each question and see where was the redundancy, where sure. was, it's too long. But in my opinion, try to keep it uh, concise and to the point. The other thing is that the structure of the interview we had is not an actual structure of the interviews that you'll see. I, but the way I want it to, to be, and this, this is the way we do our advising sessions, is that we would try to cover all the questions. So oh, I can yeah. make it look like an interview, but this might be one interview or two interviews that you get. But this, the mm -hmm. way that we do the sessions that we like we did now, I try to cover general questions like tell me about yourself, uh, why the specialty, why you. Uh, I covered the question from your CV. I asked you some behavioral questions, some random weird questions that you might you might not encounter to see how you respond. And the end with, uh, do you have any questions for me? So this might not be the structure of your actual interview, but in this mm -hmm. way, we prepare you the best for any interview you get. You might get an interview that is fully behavioral questions. You might get an interview mm -hmm. that is fully general questions, but in this way, we would have prepared you for all. Now let's go, this is general feedback. Let's go over the detailed feedback. Let's start with the tell me about yourself. The tell me about yourself, I felt it was very, very long. In my opinion, oh, right. all questions should be one minute, one minute and a half. So okay. uh, remember these, these program directors, these associates, anyone who's interviewing is interviewing probably 100 other applicants, not only you. Yes. On the same day, they might be interviewing 20, 30. So their attention span is very low. So you have to be very uh, concise in the way you answer your question. So right. over your actual question answer. So you you said you grew up in Mumbai, which is like a good start to give a background about you. Maybe you can mention a few words about the city. So Mumbai is very right. internationally, so everyone knows that. But maybe if you're an applicant from a smaller city, you can give us a little bit of touch of what is the city about, what is famous, or like it's known for this. That might bring more fun to the answer. Uh, break some ice, and in, in, especially that this is going to be the first question. Uh, you talked about your parents not being doctors. Uh, you don't necessarily need to mention that they're not doctors, but you can go growing in an engineering family. I did not expect to have developed passion for medicine. So you can blend it yeah. like this rather than the generic way that people, oh, I didn't grow in a family of doctors. Uh, you mentioned that you have a brother. It's like nice to bring up your family background in whatever mm. fits the story. It's not like I'm just trying to include things here and there to check the box. Oh, I, I, I talked about my family. In my opinion, you should bring anything from your background, any hobby, anything that you grew up on that can blend with the story. The portion that I feel was extremely long is the interest in medicine. So remember, you, right. you're mm -hmm. not applying to med school at this point. That we already yes. passed by. You already finished med school. You already graduated. So I don't need necessarily to hear half an hour of you talking about why you're interested in, the, in, in medicine in the first place. So maybe if a word or two, uh, growing up, I know that I'm interested in medicine, but then I got exposed to a patient scenario in which like this, but very briefly, very briefly and go directly now to why surgery. You don't, again, this, yeah. this answer is tell me about yourself. So I wanna know surgery within the scope of yourself. This should not answer these question of why surgery because why okay, surgery yeah. has its own details its own interactions this is more of like blending the, the timeline of you growing up interested in medicine during medicine you developed passion for surgery how did you maybe become interested in coming to the u.s in the first place maybe challenges challenges you face across the way uh, i'm also interested in research you mentioned that but again it was extremely long but you have to blend it with the story so i'm interested in yeah. research because I saw how it impacts patient care. And I imagine my career to be a combination of both surgery and research in addition to education because I did this and that. So I need to see how things are blending together. So each point should lead to the next. And this hobbies at the end is not a bad idea, but again, I felt it's like patches. The answer was patches mm -hmm. here and there trying to fill check boxes. True. So if you don't feel that it's, you know, blending, you're just saying, oh, I play you, I do yoga and I do stuff. It's already in your hobbies and interests. So if you really want to ask about it, it's fine. But if you want to blend it, you can say, I also realized during medicine that how uh, attention to self and taking care of ourselves and 
being self-aware is extremely important. That's how I develop passion for yoga. And I keep myself mm -hmm. well by doing uh, meditation or spending time doing this. So try to blend it. Not like one, two, three, I'm answering points I read online that I need to answer and determine about yourself. Right. Got okay. it. Thank you so much for the feedback. Yeah. Also, the another point I realized, personality, I'm always, always against mentioning all oh, my personality. You mentioned something about your personality or people describe you yes. as something. I highly yeah. recommend not including anything about that. Not in your personal statement, okay. not in your interview. The reason is I don't want... So these people are very smart. So you don't need to tell them I'm hardworking to tell them that I'm hardworking. Through whatever you're saying, through the tell me about yourself or volunteering experience, or if they ask you about your research or uh, tell me about a miscommunication, you can tell them I'm hardworking from something else. So I yeah. highly recommend not saying, oh, my people describe me, unless they ask you, like I asked you, how would people describe you? But don't tell them people describe me as, as passionate. And everyone says that, you know, I need, if you want to say something, I need a proof. And I don't want you to show me that you're trying to show me a proof. I want to see that you're telling me a story or you're asking a question naturally. And I'm concluding that you're passionate about patients, you're hardworking, you're a team player, all these aspects. Okay. Right. Okay. So now let's go to the other question, which is interest of the, of the special in the specialty. So these two are the probably the most common questions that you'll find in, uh, on the residency interview. Tell me about yourself and why you're interested in the specialty. Sometimes career goals, strengths, weaknesses. Why the program? Uh, rarely people would ask why medicine because again we passed that point. But why yes. the specialty is extremely important. And this applies for those applying to internal medicine watching this video. Uh, the characteristics of the answer or the elements of the answer apply to all specialties. So generally, I prefer to have that answer based on your experiences. And you did well in the, in the beginning when you started talking about you being in the OR, having this adrenaline rush. But again, yes. I want to hear more. So for example, you can say right. during my internship or even before, whenever you started having the passion, you can say during my third year, I started doing surgery rotation. And I remember the first time I went to, to the OR, it was a cardiac surgery case. And I was amazed by how one, two, three happened. So this esophageal cancer case could be the beginning of the interest uh, rather than the end. Why? Because generally, when you develop interest in the specialty, you might have like a case that is, wow, this is like sparked my interest. But it's very unlikely that someone, oh, I'm pursuing specialty, but just because of that case. So... Generally, the cases okay. would come at the beginning. If you want to put it at the end, I recommend including an overall experience rather than a patient experience. So in the person's right. statement, things might be a little bit different, but in an actual interview, we're beyond that. We're like, we're choosing a full specialty. We need to hear the overall experience. So you can say during your cardiac surgery rotation, you saw how some patients with esophageal cancer were treated within hours and they were able to do that to like eat, speak, patients with presenting with trauma after a gunshot wound, they were bleeding and dying. And after, you know, an hour of surgery, they're alive and back to their families. So I need to hear more than one aspect of the specialty that can convince right. me that you actually know what you're talking about. Because you'll see those people who talk about IM or surgery. I like internal medicine because of the broad spectrum of things I can get exposed to and also of the long-term relationship I establish with patients and because of the continuous knowledge, you might think, oh, that's a good answer. It's not bad. In my opinion, it's bad because you're reciting things probably you read online. I like the answer to be very personal. Instead of saying, I love internal medicine because of the long-term relationship, I want to hear during my internal medicine rotation, I established long-term relationship with patients. I saw how my mentors having patients come back after years and they tell me stories how they've been following them for 50 years or 12 years 15 years and that type of relationship i didn't find it in other specialties so stuff like that these experiences that you mm. experience on the rotation but again very brief this answer was very long portions of it were generic and how can you test somebody my how can i know that an answer is generic if someone other than you takes that answer and put them in their answer and it applies, it doesn't like seem wrong, that means it's too generic. Don't do it, don't use it. I want if they yeah. take your answer and put it in their answer, it shouldn't fit. Because it's specific to you. It's specific to your rotation, it's specific to your experience, your internship. So you actually could have used 
So I asked you about your internship separately, but you can have used the internship yeah. as a strength point. So instead of you waiting them to ask you about your strength, every answer should be the opportunity for you to express your strength. So you can say, uh, start talking about you know the interest, how it developed, uh, what kind of cases impressed you, what aspects of surgery you loved from you being in the OR, not like I'm a third person watching in the ivory tower, from you actually working. And then you can say, and I also loved my time during my internship because I got exposed to over 50 cases a month. I was scrubbing in, helping mm -hmm. with surgeries. So here you're expressing interest from an experience, but you're also telling a strength of surgical skills, clinical skills in surgery. So this is how you can use each experience to express strength uh, throughout the interview. You re you're talking about research could be, you. for example, when we talk about the behavioral questions, teamwork or whatever, leadership, these stories should be strength stories. So when you're telling me about teamwork, I want to hear about how your surgery and your strong clinically, all this should fit together. Or you can tell me a research story that I can, oh, I didn't know that she did research, but now because of the teamwork story, I know that she does research. So yeah. preparation for interviews is not as simple as people think, because yes, you can answer a question that doesn't seem wrong, fine, but to stand out, this is what I always say, to ace your interview, stand out, you have to go to the next level. And we'll talk about the other questions as well. In my opinion, again, it was very long. Some portions were, were, of it were generic. And um, what else I wrote here? Uh, the meditation aspect of it, I feel that is more in the redundant part of the answer. So okay. if we had time, maybe, but it was too long, so I, I would cut that. And you said something about uh, your sister or something. I don't know if I wrote that right. Team, sister. Uh, so, so there is something about teamwork. I felt that was, so you have to pick three points. Don't answer more than three, po three points and expand on them and that's okay. it. Okay, so yes. Don't try yes. going to six, seven points. Uh, try to be focused on like ideas and like expand on it from your experiences. Okay. Right. So now let's go to why the program. You answered that question relatively good. Um, you, but again, it was long. Because I started losing attention, I don't remember some portions of it. That especially the first point you mentioned, I kind of uh, zoomed out. <laughs> so you're, I think you're talking about the clinical skills of the program in the first point, right? Yes. That is the no, most kind of yes. That yes. is the most important thing that every applicant should focus on. When you're talking about the program, always remember in the back of your mind, you're applying to a clinical job. I know you're interested in research. I know you're interested in education, but if you're actually interested in research and nothing else, go to apply to a research program, not to a residency. You're applying for residency because you're interested in the clinical training of that place. And of course, if you're interested in research, express that, but make your point as the clinical. So if you wanna talk about why the program, tell me why you're interested in this clinical aspect that this program focuses on, or like they have in their, uh, in their departments, in their different subspecialties. The camaraderie is not a bad point. I like the idea how, I read on your website, it shows me someone who actually did some work, uh, not talking generic stuff. When you answer this question, make sure you actually read their website, attend the virtual meet and greet or whatever they have the day before, take information from the session. Generally, all interviews start with an introduction session about the program before you start the actual interview. So you can say, I loved what you mentioned about uh, residents matching into their top fellowship. I'm interested in competitive fellowship, which is surgical oncology. And uh, I love that I would have that opportunity to be training at this program. So here people think, oh, I like express something from the, from the session. No, it's I'm also talking about how I am interested in a fellowship. So that means I'm an applicant who doesn't want to just go and open private practice and uh, practice on their own after they finish general surgery training. I am someone that the program might take pride in matching into a competitive subspecialty. I'm going to work hard to pursue that. So you see how simple answers, simple points in the answer might show strength of you that only expert people who are the program directors and the associate program directors understand. That's why don't just go and interview with other applicants who don't know what they're doing and like, oh, my other applicant told me on an amazing interview, you know, that's not the case. Interview with people who actually know what they're doing. Some also residents, they think they know they interview people, but it's not like that. You have to be very involved in the process, try to analyze the words beyond that to understand 
uh, or like to give advice on how to improve the answer. Again, it's not wrong what you said, but it would have been better. You might stand out in your answer because remember all applicants are very competitive or like have good scores, have some US clinical experience. So you need to be at the top of the interview. Uh, and remember, if you look at the NRMP data, interview is number one, two, three, and four in ranking. So once you receive your interview, your interview is more important than your step two CK, more than, than step one, one, two, three, four, not only like one time. Uh, I like the camaraderie idea. You can express it from what the residents told you the day before. Uh, you can express it from your uh, what you experienced in your country or how you always love teamwork and how you, when you saw that, you wanted to join the team, join the family. Uh, that's regarding the program. You can talk about clinical, you can talk about research. If you have research, you can talk about the relationship between the residents, um, fellowship match, anything that would interest you in this program. Sometimes the location might be important and you want to express it if you have like family or if you have friends or you visited the city and you liked it. So these could be extra points, but probably after you talk about clinical research, other academic endeavors. The intern year overall good. Uh, you talked about your experiences, but try to keep it more concise. Uh, that's okay. my, my main point. Uh, I asked you about the painting, the way you expressed it was good length. If you go and watch this video and okay. you can now go and watch the video and time your answers, see how yes. much you did over the one minute, one minute and a half. Uh, I think the painting answer was good enough. You talked about capturing things in real time. Uh, you can reflect on that in like how in life you want to absorb as much as you can to uh, maybe reflect them in a painting or reflect them on like your learning. So you can always make these links, but I think the answer you made uh, for the, you, you uh, answered for the painting is, is good. It was, uh, it gives me also maturity. It gave me another idea that I didn't know. Maybe the program director that is interviewing you, that is interviewing you may know about this painting, but I didn't know. So I got new information. So that's always cool. Always cool to introduce information that the interviewer might not be familiar with because that would be a discussion point. And now you're the expert. Now the ball is in your court because they would be learning from you about that and they won't be able to put you in the corner to like, oh, I'm like, I can't, I can't like tell you, uh, you can't say much about the answer if you put it in the corner. Okay, so that's regarding the painting. The US clinical experience, I think you were diplomatic in your answer, but the answer went extremely long. So, okay, two points, you had two okay. points, mainly that you, you're adaptable, okay, and you mentioned that story and the other one that you already had so much experiences. Uh, but, you might, you might, because the program director asked you a very specific question. Was this a weakness? And you didn't answer that. So okay. you went around the question, which is, again, not wrong. But I would, I would try to answer all questions. Generally, this is my preference to answer all questions. So you would say, I would not consider it as a weakness, given the experiences I, I gave uh, and the knowledge I had like from other people. I talked to multiple residents, and I made an informed decision of coming to the U.S., I would have loved to actually come and do a U.S. clinical experience, but due to the situation and COVID, I tried multiple, like reaching out to multiple doctors. Or you can not make up a reason, but this is the reality that it's not easy. This is the reality. Yes. And you can say that this is what happened, but you actually took steps to understand the process because you said that you can adapt. You went to uh, to a neighboring community in India, and you were like, "We're fine," but that's totally different situation. You're we're still within the same country. Uh, coming right. to the U.S. is a totally different step. I didn't go more into the question with you, but if they want to put you in the corner here, they would have done that easily. So I wanted right. to hear that you actually talk to people in the U.S. And yeah. you get yes. experiences from the U.S., but this could be a weakness. You can say, but, because they might ask you, what is a weakness? This is obvious on your CV. So you can say right. that this is a weakness. I'm telling you, but you already know about it technically. And uh, you might have asked me already about this. But well, these are the steps I took to overcome that weakness. So when people ask about weaknesses and they tell them I'm very detail oriented, if you have something like that, this would be a weakness. If you fail step one, this could be a weakness that you can mention. So if you have an actual weakness, go and target that weakness. Why? Because it's already on your CV. I'm not like trying to uncover gaps or uncover things that are not there. Failure of step one is very obvious on your CV. So take advantage of it and like go Go for it rather than having having them ask you about it. If you have a big uh, weakness that is not available of, to, for them to see on your CV, you might decide not to disclose that. It's your decision. But if it's obvious, 
go and take more of the front line on this and try to tackle it before they, they ask you about this. The three words also, whenever I ask the someone ask a question, try to stay within what they, they want. If they want to hear more, they ask you very specifically, tell me three words, how would they describe you? If they tell me, okay, why would they describe you like that? Here you can go and expand. And you showed compassionate, self-motivation, loyal. So the self-motivation is good. Compassionate, very important for patient care. Loyal, I don't know if this is, again, totally up to you. There is no right or wrong answer here. All these questions, especially the behavioral one and the weird ones, there is no right or wrong answer. But I don't know if you would think of something else that you'd like to tell about yourself. So sure, it's I your decision. That. Think about it, but is loyal the third most important thing a program director would like to know about you? Just think from the strength standpoint, because all these question, questions, we're trying to collect your strength. It's not like, oh, we're just hanging out and, and meeting a friend. We This is a job interview. I want to collect as many strengths as I can through these questions. Okay, so these are generally the common questions. Let's go to the behavioral ones. The behavioral ones, we started with the failure. Uh, and I have on my blog, if people can go and look at that, there are kind of four themes to these behavioral and they all kind of have some intersections. The failure, hardship, challenge that you face, this, I feel they all fall within the same category. That doesn't mean the answer is the same to all these. It's more of like they're similar to each other. The other one is communication uh, problems or uh, you had a good communication with someone. So positive or negative uh, interactions technically with residents, faculty, medical students, nursing, all, all these things. Um, the other one is teamwork and leadership. So you should definitely prepare an answer for that. And finally, patient interactions. Patient impacted you, patient uh, uh, yelled at you, angry, etc. The answer to the behavioral questions uh, I always see, like you did, applicants do the same exact mistake through interviewing multiple people last year and this year. It continues to happen. People focus too much on the background of the story and the situation rather than the solution and the learning point. So I always like to divide the behavior questions into four sections. The answer should go over systematically over four points. The background, during my third year uh, medical student rotation at this hospital, uh, this is, I'm giving, I'm getting the background. During my US clinical experience in Florida, uh, now I know, like I'm putting the story to a timeline in your journey. Then you're talking about the problem or what was the situation that you were facing. You're talking about this patient who was uh, angry, upset, put you in the corner, all these things. So this took almost 50% of your story or more than like around 60%. So once you listen back to the video, you can time all of your answer. How much did you put for that? And generally, mm -hmm. I prefer to have the background plus the problem or the situation to be less than 40%, around 30%. So I want to hear very briefly of what, what is the situation, what's the problem here. The same you did with the leadership one. We heard for an hour about like the COVID and Dubai and UAE. I, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. I want to know what you did. So I want to go very quickly to what was this. Like, I want to hear the background, this, the problem, but I want to know what you did. And I had people who would tell me, oh, and I discussed this with the residents and we resolved it. And boom, the answer is done. So this person spent literally two minutes talking about the problem and then he solved it by discussing it with the resident and that's it. So people are looking to hear more. They want to see uh, how would you reason through a problem? So you can say, I met the residents, we started listening to each other, we had disagreements, uh, some resident expressed this, some resident expressed that, but I, suggested voting system. And so I want to hear how you reach that solution. And in my opinion, the story that you brought first is too long. Second, the okay. first two parts were covering everything else. Third, I don't think honestly it's related to the story. I would have a preferred a different story than, than this. I don't think what, what happened is what I'm looking for in an answer about, tell me about the failure. Because you can say any patient misdiagnosis as a failure, but I'm looking more of like you had an exam and you didn't fail or you didn't pass or you had a situation in your school and you didn't handle it well. And that was, you know, a failure. But that story specifically, maybe if you phrase it again with less focus on the situation, more focus on the, on the solution, it would resonate with failure. Uh, and again, remember, there is no right or wrong answer. Anyone can say, oh, I would consider me 
breaking a pen a failure. I shouldn't have broken the pen, and this is a failure. Broken the pen, and this is a failure. So if we want to argue philosophically about the failure, any answer could fall within a failure. But I'm just like trying to see if there is a better answer for you as an applicant yes. to convey a failure and convey strength. What did you learn? Like, okay, there might be 50 stories for failure in your life, but there is one story that can tell me the best about you, sell yourself the most. So you need to search within your like experiences and stories. What is a better story for me to convey? Because when I was doing my interviews, I was writing stories and stories and then like, okay, if I argue through this point, I would bring that point. So you know how when the people play chess and they plan five, six steps ahead, the same here. So you are going to expect what's going to happen in this game, the interview game, based on the beginning of the story. And then you decide, okay, you know what? This story probably not the best. Let me move to the other story and so on. Clear? All right, got it. Yeah. Yes. So, the failure could be like something that can convey strength of how you survive that. And the failure doesn't have to be in medicine. It could be failure of you failing your team in a basketball game or, uh, but make sure also it's not a disastrous situation that could convey a bad thing about you. So you have to be very wise in choosing these experiences. The leadership skill, I got at the end after half an hour of what you're trying to say, but I don't think the beginning, I don't think you were prepared for this question and you're trying to make an answer on the spot. Uh, it was like just going around and around and around until we reached that you organize this thing. And again, it's not, you know, the, it's not wrong, but I don't know if there is something better you can do. Maybe talking about your research and during your research, how you led a team of med students. And I want to hear what you did as a leader. And here, if I understood correctly, you were just trying to get uh, these pamphlets and uh, or like these uh, brochures and you, I didn't hear characteristics of a leader. What are the characteristics of a leader? Someone who listens to their team, who organizes the team, who works the hardest. Uh, I felt that this is an initiative you did, but I didn't feel the leadership organization skills that I want to hear as program director. The leader, the resident who is a leader, chief resident, leads a team of residents. Work with them, not like a boss. So I want to see the this positive aspects of a leader. The same with the team. I want to hear when I tell you, tell me about a story that in which you demonstrated team skills. I want to see what you did as a team player, what actual things you took. Like the story I told you, uh, I want to hear, did you do voting? Did you listen to them? What type of things you did? Not like we discussed it and we resolved it as a team and, and we loved each other. That's not, that's not enough. If you want to stand out, it's not wrong, but if you want to stand out, you need to, to jump to the next level of you answering your questions which needs preparation. And you'll see after reading these 200 questions, preparing an answer uh, for each of them, you would start playing with the stories. It's it's not uh, uncommon to get these questions. I think you almost have 90% chance of getting a question from these 200 questions or the majority of your questions because they cover almost everything. But even these questions that you don't, they're not on the list specifically. I think you can start playing with the stories because you would have so much stories, so much, so many strengths that you already have in your mind uh, prioritized that you can answer things on the spot from this huge collection of things that you have already. Uh, let me see here, what else do we have? Uh, then we talked about the miscommunication, the resident story. I don't think, again, this is a bad story, but I will structure it more into- uh, Yes. Uh, like, Focusing more on the engagement, like how did how did you handle the yeah. situation with this? Yes. Um, I understood this the problem, but I want to go to the uh, to the uh, how you resolve it. And I always recommend a learning point at the end, brief, not too long, maybe five six words, even if they didn't ask you a learning point. I feel that sometimes can hide a bad answer. What I mean by that, sometimes you might not answer this question perfectly because you're not well prepared, or this is like a question that you haven't seen before, I feel it's always easier to answer, tell me how would you handle miscommunication rather than tell me a situation about miscommunication. Because you can talk about how would you handle uh, a miscommunication much easier. It's like a hypothetical situation rather than trying to make up a story or remember a story from, from you know what happened to you. So the learning point can like move the question back to you and you're in control of the story. So. You can tell briefly about the problem and the background, going to the 
situation and how you handled it, how you handled the situation, the solution, what I call it in my videos, and the end should be the learning. So maybe 30%, around 50%, and then 20% to the learning, or maybe uh, 30, 40, 30. Uh, now we moved, afterwards we moved to totally different type of questions, kind of these random weird questions that you probably might be asked about during, and especially from younger people that are moving towards uh, evaluating applicants without preparation. They don't want, they want to see how you answer the question on the spot. Uh, your, uh, your spontaneity, how would you, if you didn't know the answer to this, what would you tell me? Like the three question, I'm sure you've not seen that question before. And they will ask you weird questions that probably you want, you haven't seen. Some weird questions are repetitive, superpower, uh, cell that you identify with, but the, some might ask you very weird questions and they want to see how you'd answer on the spot. And one of the questions actually going back to the uh, leadership one, I saw that you were thinking for like 10, 20 seconds and that is fine. Some people think that's a disaster. Oh my gosh, I waited. I like had them wait for 10 seconds. That's fine. They're expecting not every applicant to have a full answer of everything. Spontaneity is good, but remember also don't be robotic. I've seen people who prepare and it feels like a robot. They're reading lines. They memorize the answer. No, don't memorize the answer. Memorize bullet points that you want to cover and then speak from your own words. So uh, it's fine if you wait, if you take a second, or even if you ask them, uh, can I take 10 seconds to think about this question? It's fine. It's not wrong. It's, it might make you feel nervous, but be prepared for some scenarios that you might not have an answer immediately. It's better than saying, I don't know the answer or like not answering it. Taking 10 seconds to think about it, it's fine. And they might tell you, okay, let's go and talk about another question. It's fine. But at least you think about it. And, and even if you take 10 seconds, totally fine. Uh, so the movie, I didn't honestly understand what you were trying to tell me. From, from this scenario about the lions and the humans, I understood something about you know, conflict between animals and humans, but I don't know if you can sell me a better point. Like, let me give you a, a better, like an example, and you tell me what you think. What about like a movie of someone immigrating from India and like making their way through the US or through another country and how the challenges and how it resonated with you as now someone trying to build your future in a different country and you telling them about the story, but also the story is resonating with you or something else, maybe somebody was playing piano and the challenges they faced and the resilience you, you saw how someone reminded you of resilience in medicine. Um, or even something about nature, it's not wrong, but I feel the way you explained it was not very clear. Maybe you were taken by the fact yeah. it's like a weird question. And again, you went around and around. I want to hear these questions. I want to hear the answer in less than one minute. Like, okay, this movie was about like animals and humans were invading the animals' habitat. So it showed the conflict between the two. At the end, humans survived, but it taught us a very important lesson of how to keep the balance, how to keep our nature safe. See, that's like a more clear answer. I, wanna, right. I don't want you to repeat the same point multiple times. Have it very okay. clear the first time. The tree, the tree, I, I'm like, okay, okay with the answer. Uh, I think it could be better, but these questions, you don't prepare for them. So the answer you gave is good enough for the answer on the spot. So these, again, questions, you can't prepare for them because you try to practice as much as you can, but there is no perfect answer. So what you answer is fine. You want to hear the advice. It's fine too. The tree might have survived so many things. Uh, again, I'm not going to give you an answer because I don't think there's a perfect answer. It's whatever uh, you think and what can... Ref you want to always remember there are points you want to reflect as your strength and you want to tell, tell it through any okay. answer. But listening to advice can show that you are someone who likes to listen to people, who likes to take advice, to work on it. So that's that's a positive angle you, you can think about yourself. Uh, the questions to the program. So I always recommend having two questions. So especially after a long interview, don't ask more than two questions. Even if they ask you, you have more questions. There are some exceptions to this. So if you are scheduled for a 10 minute interview and you finished in five minutes and you can feel the vibe of the interview. So we are humans, we're not robots. So if you feel that the program, like there's still five minutes and the program director is open to having more questions, they're not playing with their phone or looking somewhere else and stuff, maybe go for more questions. If you feel that this is nine minutes and we're jumping into the other applicant time. And this is now becoming more of a, a negative thing rather than a positive thing, you can stop. 
So all right. Picture each case based on the situation. Sometimes they you might encounter someone by uh, do you have any questions for me? The beginning of the interview. Now tell me about yourself. So in that case, they control the the, the flow of the interview. So here, if they ask, me, do you have any more questions for me? In that case, some some people don't like to ask questions or they didn't prepare questions. They want you to learn about the program, which is like a valid point. Remember, these interviews are two ways. It's not only for them to test you, you're also to test them as a program. If you want to spend the rest of your life, five years or seven years or three years in this program. So some people would start with a question. And in that case, you ask, you continue asking as long as they're asking you. Maybe stop after four if you feel that the interview is going to end. So again, you know, measure each case, uh, case by case basis. But at the end of interview, reaching the time, try to be more conservative. So the questions you asked uh, were good, but you might suggest uh, look for other questions that can help you more choose the program. Let's see from these pro questions you asked, how many can help me actually choose the program. So uh, changes that happen in the program, I think it's not a bad answer. I think it, help, it helps you choose the program because if you uh, see that this program has not changed or you know is not listening to the residents' feedback, I don't think this is a good program. So I think this question can tell you something about the program. This is not a, a, a bad a, a question and you can ask it. The gender one is a tricky one because I'm not yeah. sure what you're trying mm -hmm. to achieve from this question. So if you're telling, if you're asking them about females uh, representation, you know, you can see that on the website. Uh, it's already clear, like how many residents they have, males, females. If you're trying, or you already met the residents already during the pre-interview session or during the morning. If you're trying to ask about female, uh, uh, the opportunity for them to have children or uh, maternity leave, stuff like that, that's a different question. So you have to ask it differently. The way you asked it, I didn't learn much about the program okay. by answering that question. So either phrase it specifically about a specific thing that you're trying to answer because you have children already or because you want to have a children. You have children, that's totally fine. Uh, but if you want to ask the like just gender representation, you already know that from their website. So I always recommend not asking questions that you could have found easily on their website because that shows that you didn't search. Every applicant should search a program before they interview with them. If you don't have time to search the program, maybe don't apply because you, you're, you're going for, for like a half a day to learn about the program. You should have done your homework to not ask. And I actually had an applicant once ask the program director and the program director told them, go and check our website. You, like, you can see how embarrassing that is in front of all the other applicants when somebody tells you, you didn't even check our website. So if they don't have information, that's a different story, but try to check their website. The diversity question is, again, very vague. I like to have very specific questions. What did you mean by diversity? Did you mean racial diversity? Did you mean gender diversity? Because we already talked about gender in the question before. Did you mean LGBTQ? Again, these questions are valid, but I want them to be clear. Like, what are you trying to ask me? Uh, are you trying to ask me that the patient population is diverse or that they have other you know, residents that are from diverse background or, and that question does not, some, some people, let's rephrase, some people, this is the priority and this is number one. So if the program is not diverse, they don't want to go there. That's valid. But you have to ask yourself, what is the most important thing for me as an applicant so I can ask about these things. So you can convey strength through the question by saying, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a, I've done multiple research projects and I'm very interested in research. I saw that some of the faculty here have multiple publications about this and that. How is how is it the possibility of residents being involved in research during you know during residency? And here you're conveying your research background, you're conveying knowledge about the program, and you're conveying that you want to do that in the future as well. Because some people do research and stop. So you're conveying three points here in your question about research. Um, you can ask about the clinical aspects. Uh, I'm very interested in this type of field, surgical oncology, uh, or like whatever field you're interested in. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about the exposure to surgical oncology in this program? Can you tell me about the autonomy? So you can cover something about clinical, that can help you. The changes, again, this is a valid question. Some people ask, the weakness one is actually a really good one because you want to know what the weakness of this program, but generally I don't say weakness. I always recommend saying, what things would you like to improve about the program? Which is another word for mm -hmm. weakness. So yeah. I, like, again, weakness is not wrong, 
Uh, but a, a nicer way of saying the same is what things would you like about the program? I used to ask a lot, what are the strengths of this program and what what would you like to change about the program? Kind of combine both so they can take pride in things that they want to talk about and then they can go to the things they do when they want to improve. And every program has weakness, so that's, that's totally fine. I think the weakness question, the changes question definitely can help you know about the program. The gender and diversity can help you, but to a lesser extent when they're vague. So if you say, let's rephrase, I'm a member of the LGBT community. I did a lot of work in India in improving access to uh, prep, uh, prevention of uh, HIV before exposure. Uh, I'm also interested in doing that. Have you had uh, instances in which residents participated to be part of a diversity group or improving diversity among the residents regarding this? So if this is very important to you, I want to hear why you're interested in this kind of and reflecting on that. Or you're like activist in female issues and you've worked so hard to like increase representation. What has this program has done to increase your representation? Try to always blend it with you, not just dry questions. Yes, yes, now I get it, yes. Awesome, and generally during the hour advisory session, we ask you to write notes about these things uh, so you can keep them in mind because it's a lot, but now this video will be recorded and you can have access to it uh, whenever you want. Also, we, we ask people if they have questions after each single question. We didn't want to do that to keep like the video streaming now, but generally, like, if you have any questions now about any of the points I talked about, we can cover it now. Yes, so uh, I think it was a very great analysis. First of all, I would like to really thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I learned a lot about uh, the structure of the interview, what I should be saying, how much should I say, how much I should be saying it, and uh, overall, what would uh, make the program director know more about me in a single answer rather than, um, you know, uh, wanting, uh, like, waiting for the program to ask the question and only then bringing up the topic. So I think it was a very... Uh, balanced and a very uh, innovative way of answering questions and i really like your feedback thank you so much you're more than and welcome. i think and, yeah. and uh, to be honest with you you're kind of on the higher end of uh, so many applicants especially international graduates i've worked with because in national graduates we want to admit it or not they're on a different uh, stage than american students because american students have interviewed for college have interviewed for uh, medical school and now this is their third time interview they, they've interviewed True. multiple jobs IMGs first this is not their language not their culture right. and third most of us went to med school based on scores so we don't have yes. a structure so you actually were well prepared you did not stop at any questions you answered a question that is reasonably okay but could be improved that's why I always right. want somebody who starts with six to jump to nine somebody who starts with right. zero to jump to six so we don't expect all applicants to improve the same after the session, but you have the potential. So that's why I want, I want more into details and stuff to like, give, I want you to shine and go to nine and even 10. Thank you so much. Thank you for the feedback. And I'm sure I'll be able to incorporate these small, small tips. And I think the next time I give a mock interview, I'd be much, much better because uh, this is the first time I'm doing a mock interview God. like this on a platform like this. Uh, thank you for your courage. I'm sure so many students will... Uh, will find this very helpful and for those who are listening if you find this helpful thanks Sanya for her courage to show up on her on YouTube for the first session for her first interview mock interview session so that was uh, very nice of you so Sanya to give us your time and for our viewers if you have any questions about interview prep uh, you can leave them in the comments below if you need to have a session like this with one of our advisors I'll leave the link for our interview prep in the, uh, in the discussion below in the comments and if you have any questions, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Mark Asad, my Facebook page, Mark Asad MD, or uh, our email info at themagicguy.com. If you found any value in this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post uh, future videos of my YouTube channel. Definitely share this video with your colleagues. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.